Hello, and thank you for joining us this week for Harvard Plays. We have got a really fun game for this week. We have Super Crush KO, a game which I worried might fly under a lot of people's radars just because uh, the art style is very bright and pastel y and it doesn't seem like a very hardcore game. But it is a side scrolling beat em up, and it's one of the best examples of the genre that I've played on Switch so far. So. I am really, really excited to be showing you some of the game's mechanics and explaining why why I love it so much. It's it's honestly some of the most fun I've had in two dimensions in a long time. So let's jump right into it. The game does have a bit of story, but it's it's an excuse plot in the best of ways. Um, I believe the first the first cutscene has been skipped, so be right back. Okay, so I'll edit this all together because this is definitely worth seeing. This girl's got a really cool phone case, by the way, and a really great cat. The art style is just so cool. It reminds me of the modern kind of late 2000s, early 2010s graphic novels with the panels and the, the jagged lines and the shapes. And yeah, so this random alien person just comes and kidnaps the cat and leaves. And there's robots, and you gotta beat up the robots. And this is basically all there is to it. So now that we've seen that, now that we have some context as to why we're beating up some robots, let's go into the tutorial. Alright, how good does this look by the way? Look at those colours. What a vibe. Anyways, you've got a jump and a double jump, so you can clear a good part of the screen just by jumping. You've got a four hit combo on Y. And one of my favorite mechanics is you see the cloud on the top right, where it gives you a score and a combo meter. You can build up your combo by just chaining together attacks, and you'll eventually get up to S rank if you're good enough at keeping your attacks going and not dawdling for too long. Okay, we got a checkpoint, it's a vending machine, as the best of checkpoints are. I really like the design of the backgrounds because it's so... It's so muted, but you get a clear sense of what it's meant to be. It definitely gives you a nice, relaxed, wholesome vibe. Okay, so th these are shooting enemies. You can press ZR to automatically lock onto one and shoot them. And your gun runs out of energy pretty quickly. It's the bar in between your health and your specials on the top left. And so it'll fire fast and then it won't anymore. So you've got a limited amount of uses for it. One cool thing about the gun is that you can use it to cancel the attacks of enemies that are far away from you. Like if you look at this one, it's about to attack me, it's yellow, and then you can just shoot it. So one of the best skills of this game is weaving in melee combos with your gun, and that way you can keep your combo going and you can address the more difficult enemies. The game designs enemies really well so that even though the combo system is all built on cancelling and on not letting the enemies get a single move in, it's still a good challenge. There's still enemies that require you to change your strategy and really think about how you're going through the encounters. Let's see we're at a ball. Well, never mind, I was gonna say we're at a B rank combo. ZL is a, com a dodge, which makes you invincible. These are all very familiar me mechanics to anyone who's played a beat em up or just any modern platformer. You can find this kind of design in everything from Mega Man Zero to the the spiritual successes, so the Gun Vault series and things like. I can't really think of a good side scrolling beat em up right now. Maybe something like Streets of Rage? And you can think of seeing this combo style of fast gameplay in a lot of Falcom games, so like the East series. So because these are all games that I really like, Super Crush KO just n knocked it out of the park for me. It gets the mechanics that some of the games just don't really do very well, 
and it's just so much fun. It's just a good vibe all around. There's still the tutorial, so there's not a lot to show so far. Those enemies uh, do use a dash attack if you leave them alone for too long, but they have very, very long hit stuns, so you just want to get up in their face and start hitting them. Let's see if we can get to S rank combo in this fight. Making sure to use the gun when you're further away from enemies to keep your combo going. And you can also use it to interrupt attacks to make sure that you're not being hit. The second you get hit, your combo ends as well, so you just gotta be careful, dodge when necessary, and you get points with style. There's a few different moves that you'll unlock later on, and if you kill enemies in a stylish way, then you'll get lots of rewards for that. So at the end of a level, you'll get ranked in your time, your continues, whether you took any hits, and if you got perfect combo. We didn't manage that for any of the fights in this round, but we're gonna improve on this. And you can see at the bottom too, you can track each level, you'll get a ranking based on how well you did it. And if you're really dedicated, you can have a run of this game where you perfect combo every single encounter. And you got online leaderboards if you want, or you've just got plain old bragging rights. The important thing is, once you've completed an encounter, you just want to move on to the next one as fast as you can. You don't want to dawdle around, because you'll, you'll uh, run out of combo meter. You want to make sure you keep it going for as long as you can. Okay, so we're in A, but we're still keeping it up. We've just unlocked our first special, which is called Twister Drill. You press X and then you dash forward and you attack everything in your way. And this lets you... Oh no, I'm going to lose my combo. Yeah, okay, we restarted that. This lets you traverse a good amount of distance and you, if you want to hit enemies from another side, you can do that. It also combos very neatly with your regular four button attack. And so at any part of your four hits with Y, you can press X and just dash through. It's a great way to reposition yourself if you've got enemies behind you and you want to avoid some shots, or if you just want to kite your way to the next encounter. These specials do use a... Oof. Okay, so these guys you really need to shoot. They lock on. It's a bit easier. You see the bar, the four squares at the bottom of your health bar and stats on the left side? That's how many specials you get, and they recharge pretty fast, so you don't need to worry about saving them up or anything like that. Just use them whenever it's appropriate, but you want to make sure that you don't overuse them, because you'll run out. I'm going to try my best not to use not to use the extra specials I've unlocked so far, because I want to let that organically develop. So sorry the first few fights are going to be a bit boring, because all we're doing is just using our basic 4-hit combo. Interrupting the enemies with guns keeping our combo going, making sure we keep it as fast as we can. The purple gems that drop are just for your com for your specials, so if you don't care about refilling your specials, you don't need to collect them at all. There's no currency in this game, there's no shop or upgrades or RPG mechanics or whatever, it's just entirely beat em up skill. There's nothing else to it. It's the way it should be, really. So if I manage to keep this up, I should be hitting S rank soon. Okay, sorry about that one, just slight technical difficulties. Sometimes the recording rig gets disconnected and it freezes things up. Just pretend it's part of the aesthetic of the game, it's, it's part of that late 80s, 90s kind of vibe, isn't it? Okay, so we just unlocked another special move, which is the uppercut slow, uppercut slice. And this is a crowd clearing move that you have to use on the ground. You hold your stick down and then you press X. It's great for stronger enemies, which we'll see later on, that can take all can charge up an attack and are generally resistant to your four button combo. I should be really using my dodge better. I could dodge through those bullets and not take any damage. It's not playing my best right now.
the, the four button combo on the ground is enough to take out one of the robots and it takes two combos of air attacks to take him out. So generally ground is better, you just want to plan out how you want to approach each mob of enemies. Things do get more complex as the game goes on as well. This is still just trying to teach you the very, very basics. And while there's a bit of downtime, I get to talk about one of my favorite mechanics of all time, which is animation cancelling. I think I mentioned animation cancelling in nearly every review of an action game that I've done on, DD, on DDNet, is because I think it's such an important concept that not every game developer puts into their game and wants to be in their game, but I think it just makes the feel so much more fluid and so much more entertaining, is if you can very smoothly cancel from one attack to the other. Now what I mean by animation cancelling, and I'll make a more detailed video explaining the specifics of it when we look at Street Fighter 2 later on, it's when you can cancel the ending animation of your attack and move it into another attack. So if you're attacking and then you quickly change into a special, you save a bit of time and you keep the enemy in a combo. We'll show some examples of that in the next level. We took five hits and we didn't get perfect combo on any of those, which is a shame. My first run of this was a bit better. And wow, they actually track score counts for S ranks. And they show you that if I got 120K, then I would have gotten an S rank. Okay. So let's go to level 1-2. This one introduces these spike patterns on the ground, so if you step on them, they trigger spikes, and although enemies can't trigger them, they can get hurt by them. So for example, if I was to step on this one here, and then, well, the enemy walked off, but if it was still standing on there, they would have been hurt. This just adds to the sensation of movement in a fight. You've got to keep moving around, you can't stay in one place. It prevents you from turtling, which is... Oh, I got hit for that. Prevents you from turtling, which is obviously one of the ways to play a beat-em-up and have it not be fun, right? I feel like a lot of game developers now are getting good at preventing the players from optimizing their strategy too much and just running out of fun. Because you don't want to be doing the same thing over and over again, you want to be doing different things, mixing it up. That's why everything in this game is such a limitation. You can't just kill everything with a 4 button combo because you'll get hit by attacks. You can't just kill everything with the gun because you'll run out of energy. And you can't just kill everything with specials because you run out of uh, cubes. I don't know what to call it. You know, special uses. Okay, so that's the next special as well. If you use midair, direction X, you can just charge through an enemy. And this is a lot of fun. This one you can counter from an air attack, so you can go 1, 2, dash, or 1, 2, 3, dash. I'm out of energy, so I've got to collect a bit more before I can show how effective this move is. 1, 2, dash. And the good thing about this is that you can do three of them in a row in midair. And this lets you, well, it's more of a repositioning move. So it doesn't deal a huge amount of damage, but it's good if you want to quickly move your enemies from one side of the map to the other. That way you can start a combo on the next group of enemies and keep your thing going. Usually when arriving on the next screen, you want to just quickly shoot the gun, make it lock onto whatever's there. That way you don't lose the combo from the previous screen. Um, and it's got hit, so it doesn't matter anymore. This game can be not difficult, but it's very deep and demanding if you want to get the full score. If you want to get the best rank possible, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of skill to get through all that. Ooh, and I forgot to mention, your A button is a big laser like the one I just did, and I keep forgetting to use it. It's more of a screen clearer, so in a desperate situation, that's that moon-shaped bar around your character. And I just realized, but that's a... it seems to me like a bit of a Sailor Moon reference. This whole game actually has a bit of that vibe. 
pastel colors, the soft lines. It's got a bit of that Sailor Moon vibe going on. Finishing up these enemies, we're on B rank still, which is not that great. Need to keep things going, keep the speed up. Those big enemies can't be interrupted with your attacks or specials, except with the down special you can interrupt them. So that's where you need to plan around your wind up, because the down the down special does take a bit of time to charge up. And if you work that into your combos, then you can deal with those big wolf enemies pretty easily. But if you're not careful, that's where you take a lot of damage in this game, is if you don't realize that your attacks aren't uh, putting your enemies into hit-stun like that. And I'm on S rank now. I need to make sure I keep my S rank. The second I say that I lose my S rank. This is one of the few games that I find it harder to play and talk at the same time, just because you need to be thinking about your next move and your next step all the time. It's not a second to wait and dawdle. So another way to get past the big wolf is to just use your dash special, and that way you end up on the other side of him and you don't take any damage from the charge attack. Okay. So this dev, well actually, first of all, this game was recommended to me by uh, Matt Codd from DDNet, and he wrote a great review of it on shindig.nz, I believe. And Matt really likes these kind of indie games that have that kind of wholesome energy, and this one definitely has that, right? Even though it is a beat-em-up, it's not like gritty and violent like a lot of other beat-em-ups. And so it's easy to have a lot of fun and just to share this with somebody else. I also think that the graphics and the music production values here are just really, really good. I love the animations and the smears that go into the attacks. It's very clear on what the hitboxes are and yeah, it's just, it feels good. Good game feel. Everything just flows really fluidly. Just very fun to move around, just jump around. And that is the level. Okay, so we got a time bonus, no continues, took a bunch of hits, and we got one perfect combo. So each level is divided up into small segments, and if you manage to keep an S rank through the whole entire segment and not lose your combo at any point, then you'll get the medal for that segment. If I was really good, I'd be able to rush through the entire level without taking a single hit and without losing my combo a single time. But I am not that good at this game. This is one thing I like about modern beat-em-ups, like, well, in the 3D realm, things like Bayonetta, right? Which is that you can beat them pretty easily, they're not hard. And enemies will generally stay in hit stun and let you just 4-button combo them and it won't be too much resistance. But then the challenge is just being efficient with the way that you go through the level, avoiding damage whenever you can, and making sure that you keep your combos going, making the most out of your animations. That's something that genre aficionados are gonna be really, we're gonna find really deep and rewarding in this game. Taking so much damage on this run. I swear, last time I played this, I was getting regular perfect combos whenever I was doing my fights. Okay, let's keep it up. Yep, so you want to use that dash move to just combo yourself into your next enemy. You keep your momentum, keep moving. combo your basic attacks into a jump or into any kind of other move. You can't 
just decide halfway through your second attack that you don't want to attack anymore, you're going to move backwards. You have to think about another move to combo into his power. I like those wind turbines too. Nice touch. So the, the devs of this game also made a game called Graceful Explosion Machine, and I believe that one's just a... I don't know, I haven't played it, but I've seen it floating around. It is a um, scrolling shooter, I believe. And I do like that this studio has gotten itself known for making just very effective, animation-heavy action games. It reminds me of some Japanese studios like Treasure, right, or Cave guys that don't really exist anymore because there's a big shortage of mid-tier developers. But these kinds of games, I'm really glad that the indie sphere has managed to take up the reins and it hasn't really gone away because this is a kind of fun that you don't find a lot in AAA gaming anymore. You don't have games that encourage you to go fast and not be very methodical and just have a good time. That's one of the reasons why I don't think I'm going to be playing a lot of AAA games in this series? Show? I don't know what to call it. But yeah, I won't be less playing many AAA games because I don't find them as interesting. It takes hours to get started and then once it does it's just the same mechanics as everything else. Like, no one's down for that. No one's interested in that. Would rather see me get hit by these enemies over and over again because I'm terrible at these action games but I still love them. Okay, that's the knockout. Got a B rank, which is it's okay. These are platforms that disappear. I got hit by the laser again. Haven't died yet, which is good, I guess. Come close, but I haven't lost a life yet. Continues in this game are also very forgiving. You can just start from any checkpoint, uh, well, vending machine, and then there's no penalty for doing that. You get lots of lives too, so there's no such thing as like a game over or anything. This is really just a score chasing game, that's all there is to it. Okay, the armadillo also can't be count- uh, just as I say that, that's my first game ever. Yeah, the armadillo can't have its move cancelled by any of your attacks, so you need to be careful and make sure that you stay out of its way or you use your ground pound, because that's the only thing that can stop it from rolling. Your gun's energy can usually take down one small energy, one small enemy from a distance. Just try to use that as often as you can to try and leverage some of the fights and not fly around too much. Make sure those little birds and bats or whatever they, whatever they are, make sure they die fast because they're going to be very hard to avoid as things get crazier. Oops, keep accidentally using that special. I'm sure it could be better used when I actually need it. Okay, that's the knockout. Doing really badly this run. If if you were to watch a game or a player do this really well, it'd be graceful, you know, it'd be entertaining and you'd get this vicarious sense of flow, but I'm not doing that too well. Because the chain away moves together and not get hit so often, it would look interesting, it'd be like a performance, it'd be graceful. Okay, that's the knockout, got three explanation marks, I don't know what that means, is this going to be a harder fight or what? I keep forgetting about all the options available to me that have dashes and specials and dodges and the gun. So one of the things I like about this game is that it requires
requires you to use every option that you have. You can't just rely on one or two and ignore the others. You have to make the most out of everything that you do. It's one of the reasons why last year I liked Control so much. It's because it's just a triple A version of this. It's It gave you psychic powers and guns and you needed to cycle through them. You needed to make the most out of both of them. You couldn't just rely on one and then not use the other. You have to be very good at every system the game has to offer you. Okay, so our final score is only a B grade. It's a bit of a shame. You can see where my skills start to deteriorate because in the last three levels, my score was A rank, and then this one is B rank, and then the next one is C rank. So things do get harder. The enemies do get more punishing, and they do less of standing around and waiting for you to hit them. Still keeping my combo so far, that's good. I haven't lost it yet. Okay, so there I got my perfect combo points. I'm gonna keep it going for this one. It's okay if you get hit at the start of the fight because you can still keep that combo up. You can still get some S rank kills later in the fight. There's 8 rank now. Okay, let's keep it up. You can see the, the star or whatever shape it is start to deflate and deteriorate as time goes on before you uh, after you haven't hit anything for a while. Oops, that's wrong special. I meant to do that though. Okay. I've been having a little bit of problem with Joy Joy-Con drift lately, which is why I haven't been playing as many action games as I normally do. It's not serious, it's only, it only happens every once in a while, but it's just you start to lose your bearings on what feels right and what feels wrong. You start to go like, I don't know if I made a mistake or if it's just my console that messed up. I do hope that there's a fix being made or like a, I don't know what to call it, like a Switch Joy-Con Pro or whatever that doesn't have the issue. Just to avoid, you know, just to avoid the console eventually getting to a state that it's not worth playing anymore. I know that a big problem with the original DS, uh, Nintendo DS's, was that the L and R buttons would eventually just start to become less consistent and then stop working. Some people said it was because of just Mario Kart DS and how often you had to spam L and R to drift in that game. But I think it was just the way it was manufactured, it wasn't manufactured to last forever. Or at the very least, it was manufactured to last long enough and then you just have to go buy the next iteration of the console. And it'll be a real shame to see what's been a really good Switch library just get completely ignored if Nintendo decides to release their next console and just goes, yeah, screw the Switch, screw the Switchies, Scott, right? We're not gonna let any of those games get sold on the new console. Who knows if that's gonna happen? We all thought it wasn't with the DS, 3DS, because they have the DSi eShop. But then suddenly, you can't access anything on the Wii or the Wii U eShop on Switch, you know? And actually, you lost out on a lot of the Wii games on the Wii U eShop. So that's become the precedent now, and I'd be really bummed if some of these games ended up getting lost just because Nintendo decided that the next console would not have the same games on the eShop as this one. I think this is also available on Steam though. This is definitely, that being said, it's definitely a game which you need to be playing with a controller. I would not play this with a keyboard, it would just not feel right. So here's an interesting fight design. They've used those lasers or energy beams, the ones that you need to dash through, and they've put them throughout the area that you need to fight in. And so this is a great example of all the game's mechanics coming together and becoming useful in a variety of ways. I know that a lot of platforming games or a lot of action games, they have mechanics that get orphaned. So you use them in certain circumstances and then you don't use them again, right? You don't, they don't become relevant for just the regular moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. They're only relevant in certain moments where the developer wants you to use that. 
Whereas in this game, I feel that every mechanic that's been given for me so far has a good use. So the, the dodge is a good use, the combos of a good use, the specials of a good use, the A button should have a good use, I'm just not using it very well. So it gives this sense of depth, it gives a sense of clarity. How's the level still not over? Okay. Looks like we're fighting our way through some kind of subway system right now. I haven't gotten too far in this game, so I don't know what kinds of environments they have in store for me later on. Would hope it's pretty diverse though. So far for the last 3-4 levels, it's just been these kinds of buildings. And it does get dull after a while. As, as good as anything looks, you can't have the same thing the entire time. Okay, that was awkward, no one saw that. These kinds of beat-em-up games with a lot of hits done, they satisfy a very certain fantasy for me, which is the fantasy of playing a fighting game but not actually competing against another human being. That's probably one of the reasons why I don't like fighting games, is because I can't deal with the competition and I'll just lose all the time. But I really do like the sensation of animation cancelling, knowing your limits, stringing your moves together, that's a great feeling. I like the flow that comes with these kinds of mechanics. Ugh. I think the designers are very clever too in that they make getting hit stop everything. It freezes the screen for ooh, a long time. You focus all your attention back on you and you think like, wow, I messed up. Okay, is it the end of the level? Still no, still going, okay. Oh, it's a big dude. I guess it could be unfun and just turtle my way through this fight. Because I don't have any life, that's the main problem. Okay, that's a heart, that's good. That lets me play a bit more risky. Okay. Oh, got hit again, so low again. It's important to use the dash to make sure you're not getting hit. Okay. I almost got this guy. Okay, we got more health. And we got the guy. Alright. Lost enemy. Sorry. This is not this has not been as graceful as I thought it would be. I really should have used this special. Yeah, it hasn't been as graceful or as smooth as I thought it would be. Clearly some more practices in order. No, I don't want to submit my score. It's not a very good score. Okay, so here is the boss fight for the stage. I believe every world is four levels and then a boss fight. I've only tried this one fight, but it's not been too bad. Okay, so this is enemy I am called Nunya. Huh? Nunya? None your business! Oh! <laughs> okay, I don't know why I find that so funny. Anyways, uh, you find that the villain's motivation is just to kidnap the cat and cuddle him and be best friends. And the cat seems to be totally okay with this. And then she summons this giant robot and then you have to fight it. It doesn't take itself too seriously, that's what I like about it. So it's like a rabbit kind of giant robot thing. And it's a good test of all the mechanics you've learned so far. He's demonstrated how bad I am by not avoiding that attack. You're meant to double jump and then you can use your special to get further out. And it's kind of like a triple jump. Yeah, this special, the air special. And that way you can dodge that charge. It is pretty fast though, it comes up pretty fast. Okay, so that starts the stage of the fight where it summons some dudes.
you're actually able to beat this boss in one full combo as well. I have no idea how you meant to do that, you'd have to be very good at the game, but I would imagine if you're good at using your gun and chain chaining moves together, it wouldn't be too hard. If I was doing a let's play with no commentary, I might try to actually do that. Might leave that as like an easter egg for the end of this video if I ever manage to do it properly. I have to say if I can even beat this guy without dying. Okay, so I got them. I wonder if I get better than a C for this attempt. Oh, I got an A! Nice! Okay. Let's move into the next world. Let's do a few more levels. Maybe let's just end at the boss of world 2. Okay, so this world is called Greenwood Park. I can imagine it's probably going to look a bit different to the last one, hopefully. Okay, that's cool. It's got like purple trees, nice park vibe, lampposts. Still the same city background that we saw from before. Ooh, big spikes. The very big spikes. Okay, getting more used to the mechanics now, so hopefully get hit less, have better combos, be less embarrassing for people to watch. What are those enemies? Oh, what was that? Okay, so they, they charge up and then they dash in a direction. Okay. And that's interesting because they're usually pretty far away from you before they charge up. So it's going to be hard for you to cancel the attack. Just got to be aware of different levels and what's going to be trying to bump into you. They also have, for something so small, they have a lot of HP. They take a little bit more than a full combo, I think. I'm going to take a regular full combo. Okay, so I've got my S rank combo now. Let's keep it that way. Um, should have shot them. Okay. We lost our combo. That's okay, though. No damage, so we still get a bunch of score from that. I actually kind of miss the sensation of going for high scores in games. I feel like so many modern games just don't bother including a scoring system anymore. Even a lot of speedrun games, they just check how quickly you finish a level, they don't check whether you've done or whether you've achieved certain conditions and so there's no point to having a leaderboard or a high score counter. That's definitely something that I feel like we're missing from the arcade era. It's just Flexing on people, right? Just showing how much better than you are at someone else's game. We don't do that as much anymore. Okay. I also like how the shape of the, the combo counter changes. So if you're D rank, you're a splotch, and then when you're C rank, you're a cloud, and then when you're B rank, you're a heart. I won't be able to show you A rank because I've been bad, but when you're A rank, you're a star, and when you're S rank, you're a cat. Which is just how life works, really. So, heart represents love, and love is less powerful than stars, which is, I guess, fame. And fame is less powerful than cats. That's how things should work in this life. And it's a bad segue from last video, where I revealed my debilitating cat allergy. Which I'm still gonna be sad about, I'm gonna be sad about for the rest of my life. Might even... I don't know if I would ever own a cat, but it would be very spiteful of myself to myself to do so. I'd just be itchy and sneezing for the rest of my life. I think I just... yeah, I just died. Armadillos, man. They're hard. They have a, a hard exo exoskeleton, but they're also a difficult enemy to fight. So I think those blue wolves have a bit more health than other wolves, the green ones. 
So make sure you use your ground pounds whenever you're fighting those amulets, and you'll be fine. Make sure you dash through the bullets. Hopefully this time we get to have a perfect combo through this screen. Okay, make sure we shoot the second that we get here. Mm, now we lost it. We lost it. It's a good try though. It's a very Dragon Ball Z combo that you can do on enemies with a lot of health, is that you can combo them on the ground and then knock them into the air, and then follow them into the air and then combo them some more. It's a good feeling. Whoops. Every time. I keep thinking that A is jump. I don't know why. I guess having putting jump on B is a bit weird. It's not something that I feel too normal for me. One other good strategy is using your specials to kind of herd enemies together, and then using your full hit combo to take out as many at once as you can. Helps you quicken the pace and lets you build up combo media a lot faster. Oh, didn't think that would hit me. I'm so bad at this game, what am I doing with my life? It reminds me of, um, I feel bad for bringing this up, but there's this, I know it's not Game Informer, it's like some tech magazine, and they sent one of their tech journalists, so not a gaming journalist, a tech journalist, over to a, I think a gaming expo, and then he played the first 12 or so minutes of Cuphead, and it's one of the stupid videos that those guys are always mad about, like game journalists and stuff. Uh, sites because they think it shows that game journalists today are very bad at games. And I don't profess to be good at games, but I like to think that I'm okay. And I feel like I'm constantly having to prove myself. <laughs> prove that I'm okay at playing games, and that makes it okay for me to write about them. Although, of course, my views on the issue is that it doesn't actually matter if you're good at games to write about games. I think that anyone can write about games if you want. You don't have to be the best gamer to be a developer or to be a QA quality assurance or to be a reviewer or anyone in the industry. If you've got your own personal enjoyment, if you've got a niche for yourself, then just go for it. Okay, that's this level. We've got an A rank again. It'll be interesting to see what mechanics they keep introducing to keep everything fresh. Because now I feel like they've kind of shown us everything the fighting system has to offer, right? We've seen the basic combos, the specials... We've got just about everything we could need. So, they'd have to come up with some new enemies, maybe new level designs, see how that continues to make things interesting. pretty well, not being hit, so keeping it up, S rank still. Okay. Oh, it's still S rank? Don't jinx her. Okay, jinxed it. It's getting harder and harder to do a perfect, a perfect combo on some of these screens. It's getting really hard. So you can interrupt the armadillo with either your down special or your up special. And that way you can make sure it doesn't ever get its attack off. Because its attack is very hard to avoid once it starts. It covers basically the entire screen. Oh, I'm taking so much damage. I took a screenshot in my panic. I don't actually know how I'm gaining lives. I don't know how the live system in this game works. Okay, we're back all the way back here. I don't actually... 
What does it mean? Because there's a level select screen. What even happens when you run out of lives? I would assume that you just get booted to the level select screen and you can have five more tries at any level you want. So is this just a formality or how much more difficult must the later levels get that you need to use up all five of your lives? Okay. Just want to make sure that you are targeting the right enemies. Oh, I'm not getting hit by soul blades. Enemies don't get affected by the soul blade for some reason. Okay, keep going. I keep that the dash special doesn't make you invincible, you don't get any iframes from it, so you can still get hit by bullets while you're dashing. It's just your uh, ZL with dodge that lets you get through bullets. Oh, I'm gonna die. This is really bad for me. Okay, I made it. Is there more? There's, there's more. This game is so hard. Okay, so jump pads, that's cool. So I guess there's more of a platforming kind of energy to that. There hasn't really been that much platforming in this game so far. There's never been... Well, I would hate for them to start introducing insta-death pits right, because it goes against the feel of the rest of the game. There hasn't been a lot of moments where I felt that jumping on stuff was the most important part of my strategy. So it's weird to see them start introducing that now. I'm sure they'll find a way to integrate that more into the combat. Like here, you can use the jump panel to maneuver around the arena a little bit better. Okay, let's keep our momentum up. Still a B rank combo, which is not fantastic. Okay, that's a vending machine. There are a lot of vending machines in the city. I would, I would wish to have a vending machine density in my Sydney, uh, my city, which is Sydney, uh, compared to this. Our vending machines are so expensive. We have a lot of 7-Elevens and like convenience stores, though. I guess it's basically the same thing. Of course, once you've been to a convenience store or used a vending machine in Japan, then you just nev can never go back. Okay, so there's our mini boss again. Last time we killed it just by using our gun a lot, which is a very boring way to beat it, but if it works, it works. We forgot to use our A button again. Would have been real useful against the big dude. A level? What was that? Was that two points? Oh wait, that wasn't the level? There's more? These levels are getting so long. Okay, another exclamation mark, so you'd think this is a big deal, right? Oof. I would have wanted that to be just a little bit more story, maybe just a little bit more tone. Something to keep me thinking while um while I'm comboing all these guys. It goes great at the start, but it's getting a little bit dull right now. Not that it's not challenging, of course, I'm still being challenged, it's just... I want to be thinking about something in addition to this. Okay, is that the level? Nope, we're still going. Did I... yeah, I used, didn't use the hard one, that's a shame. Three exclamation marks. I still don't know if that correlates to anything. Like, is it harder if it's three exclamation marks compared to one? Who knows? Did 
this one hasn't been too hard so far. So once I use my specials, then it shouldn't be too bad. Make sure the enemies that need to die first, die first. I hope I get a perfect combo from this. I don't think I've lost combo a single time. Nice, perfect combo. That's rank clear. That feels good. Oh, it's 2 2. Wow, we got nothing from that. Okay, so we didn't even get a time bonus. Still got an A rank though. Okay, two more levels and then another boss, and then we'll wrap it up for now. Got another energy barrier now. Whoa, why did we go through that? Guess we can just use our gun to get through it. Maybe we want to go to the other side of it now. Doesn't cost us anything if we use our dodge instead of just walking through, it doesn't cost us anything. so bad at this game. I should have practiced it. Like sometimes if it's a difficult game, I'll practice a little bit before I- oh I haven't seen this enemy before. I'll practice a little bit before I do it for the let's play, so it's not wholly embarrassing. I guess this one just shoots a sequence of shots. Just dodge through it. I'm gonna look, uh. I think that's the priority target for now because it's it's gonna be requiring me to dodge a lot. So we always kill the crab shooter first. Speaking of crabs, such a bad segue. Speaking of crabs, there's a great Switch game coming out from the devs of Ace of Seafood called Crab Fight. Wait, no, not Crab Fight. Fight Crab. And it is exactly what it sounds like. You play as a crab and you fight another crab using a variety of non-crabby weapons. So there's like variants where you have like a katana in each crab claw and then you're trying to outduel the other crab. It's, it sounds like it's going to be crazy. And they haven't given a release date unfortunately, but I'm really excited for when it comes out. It's on my list of... Oh, I died. It's on my list to add to my collection of games to annoy friends with at parties. How much progress did I lose from that? I don't actually notice when I'm passing the vending machines just because it's so... there's no fanfare to it, you know, it doesn't say you've achieved anything huge, it's just like, okay, vending machine reached. So if I was better at this game, I'd be using uh, one or two shots from my gun to cancel the ranged enemies and stop them from attacking before they land a hit on me. Doesn't seem to work for the crab ones though. So you need to use the, the down special to cancel them, their attacks. Okay, I've got two health left. Ugh. Don't know if we'll make it through. Another crab. This is where the, the dash special is useful, is that you just dash to the other side of it before it shoots, and then you're completely safe. Alright. That's an A rank clear. We get our health back up and we keep going. I don't really see the point of those jump pads. Like, what's that for? What does that add to this level? Okay. Let's keep it up. 
I keep getting hit by those big waves. It's because I'm not very respectful of how long their attack animation goes for and how fast it comes out. I hope this guy gives me a heart. He doesn't. Okay, I might just lose my lives here if I'm not careful. Okay, there's a heart. There's a heart. Alright. Very careful of the dash attack. Just because I keep accidentally dashing into bullets or enemies. Okay, so giant crab needs to die first. Ugh. This is really bad. Oh, it's so bad. Okay, at least we got a vending machine just then. This game is getting really hard. There's too much chaos on the screen, so it's hard to track where your priority targets are. Okay, I've got here. Let's just wreck this crab. Okay. Keep the combo going. Don't take too many risks this time. Three exclamation marks. So I'm guessing this is going to be a big fight. spawn the spider crab enemies in places that it's quite hard to reach. So it's hard to go and specifically get rid of them first because it takes so much effort to get there. Like it doesn't look like a lot, but that alcove that they spawned it in, it would have taken just a good second or two of time to maneuver there, and that second that you could have been using destroying something else. That's cool, it's like interesting small ways to add depth. Okay, that's 2-3 done. Got one more level and then we got the boss. Not too long, not too sure how long this game goes for, but I'm pretty satisfied right now. Especially if they're not going to introduce RPG mechanics and I don't rec- I don't- I mean I like that they don't. I like that they haven't. But if they're not going to introduce those then I'd be happy with the game being relatively short and just Focusing on getting better results in the individual levels rather than dragging it out for a really long time and making it not that fun. Because sometimes that happens. Sometimes you put in RPG mechanics into a game and then it just becomes a grind. You know, it stops becoming about skill and it starts becoming more about how many hours have you put in and do you really deserve to be at the final boss or whatever? Do you put enough hours into grinding and getting XP and getting the best gear and all that. And sometimes I enjoy that kind of game and sometimes I don't. Depends on how rewarding the overall gameplay is. The benefit of this system is that it's so focused on skill. There's no distinction, right? There's no way to say like, if you can't pick the level, then just go and grind a bit and then get more life or whatever, get more damage and then come back and it'll be easy. If you can't be the level, you just have to keep practicing. Just to keep it getting better. That's a new enemy. What do they do? It looks the same as the bat. Oh, it's a drill. Okay, so it drills down when it sees you. That's a very Mega Man kind of enemy design. Oh, no. I'm bad. I'm so bad. Hopefully I get through this fight without dying. Okay, we got my heart. Good. But two out of four hearts. Hopefully enough to survive till the next vending machine. Okay. Also, oh, that blue spark means that the giant laser beam is ready. Uh, 
Okay, that was a good special. That's satisfying. That's what I should have been doing this entire time. Yep, the vending machine. What is that? So... My special lit? I can jump a bit higher. Okay. It's not that necessary, I guess. The only thing with that is... If you don't have the special energy, then you have to wait for a bit before you can use it. So that is a little bit more of a platforming kind of vibe now. That was definitely more of a traversal mechanic and less of a left super beat em up fighting mechanic. Whoa. That was not the special I wanted to use. Oh man. Okay, I've got one life left. Oh, this is really bad. This is really, really bad. Every time I die, I just hit all the buttons on my controller and hope that things. Things will be okay, right? Okay, so but the, the bottom floor isn't even spikes, so it doesn't matter that much if you don't make the air pops. You see, that was one exclamation mark, and it's a really hard fight with this crab thing. I don't know what to call it, but it's a mini boss, right? It's a really hard fight. And if it's a triple exclamation mark, it doesn't seem hard at I'm also almost definitely about to die now. Hot, hot, hot. Okay, good, good, good. It's going well, I think. I'm surviving. Okay, that's a knockout. That's an A rank. Are we still going? We're still going. Tracker to say how many segments of the level you've done so far is there. It'd be nice if they had that. So you can see how long the level's about to go for. These levels have gone for a much longer time than I remember. Oh, than I remember the early ones going for. actually really reminding me of Dragon Ball Z. Just like in, in the anime where you would hit a guy in the air and then follow them into the air and then knock them down and then start firing and energy blasts at them as they're falling down. It's definitely got that very action anime kind of style going for it. And I'm all for that. I hate those really like darker and edgier beat em up games that have like Dark Souls physics, right? So you one hit takes an entire second to wind up and then it feels painful even to look at. That's not fun, I don't like that. Give me this any day, give me this stupid 30 hit combo nonsense any day. Okay, vending machine, good, good, good. The crowd needs to die first, ugh, got hit by it. To die faster. There it goes. Okay. This fight's going pretty well. There's definitely the kind of subtle design going on here as well. Whenever you try to go for a combo, oh, it's three exclamation marks. The game kind of pulls the enemies that are near your punch together so they can all get hit at the same time. It's one of those like little GDC moments that you learn that the developer is actually on your side and trying to make you feel awesome. I'm not a fan of that, definitely. 
Oh, it's another mini boss. I only have one heart left too. I don't know how I'm gonna make this. I guess we could always just cheese it and play defensively. It won't be fun to play or watch, but we'll win. Oh, we got a heart. Okay. So it's safer now. And we killed everything else. That's good. Whoa. We lost a heart. I don't know if enemies just infinitely spawn until this big guy dies. Ah, good. Ah, hard game. Really hard game. I'm also just not playing as carefully as I should. If I conserved my hearts earlier in the level and didn't do stupid things, then I'm sure I would survive a little bit like that. There's no need for me to have lost that life though. should also remember to use my A button. That would have been super useful in that fight just then. Remember, use the A button on the big crab dude. That's one of life's mottos, right? We'll put that on a t-shirt. Use the A button against the big crab dude. Okay, there's the big crab dude. And I'm gonna die because I keep getting hit. A button. He's almost dead. He's almost dead. But I keep mashing my spell. Okay, one last try. Wait, one last try? Two last tries. Two last tries. Use the A button against the big crab dude. Last time didn't work, but this time I'm feeling lucky. I still got hit in the fight before it though, which is a shame, but we'll get it through. We'll make it through. Almost the end of this let's play. We can afford to play a bit sloppy. What? I dashed that. I definitely dashed that. For the most part, the controls are very responsive though. It is just fluid. That's what you want out of a game like this. We're going into this fight with two hearts and a non-full A button gauge. Now we have three hearts and a non-full A button gauge. You know, A button gauge is full. Uh, we have one heart. Okay, screw it. Just, just hit for the thing. Um, one last try, one last try, one last try. And this time I'm gonna be defensive at the start of this checkpoint to make sure I don't lose a life to the first fight. It's gonna happen. I am excited but apprehensive. Okay, that dude's dead, that's good, that's good. Use a down combo and then just keep hitting him, good. Alright. Didn't lose life though. I think I've lost a bunch of energy for my A special though. Don't know if I'll have it up for the time the big crab guy spawns in the next fight. Yeah, I don't think I'll have it up. It's only at half bar. The big crab guy is here, but I don't have my star move. It's close though. Oh, 
Just gotta keep dodging his stuff. I still have two hearts to work with, so I can be a bit more risky. Okay, I got it, I got it. Jump down, use it. Okay, he's almost dead. He's dead. Okay, good. Hopefully that means the level's almost done. Man, if that was if that was so hard, how hard is this boss gonna be? What rank do I get? No time bonus. Four continues. I got a B. That's so lenient. That's so wholesome. Because this game reminds me a bit of uh, My Friend Pedro, which is that that gun shooting banana game. And that game's rankings at the end of the level are so strict. Okay, so Anne's asking, how could you defeat Mecha 1? Because I'm the best. Humble 2. Okay, ultimate robotic creation. Let's travel the cosmos, the robots very name frightened away entire civilizations. Is it just Mecha 2? It's Mecha 2. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> this is like how I would write. Oh, it's just the same thing. The last one was a rabbit and this one's a bird. Oh, I take it back, it's actually so different. I wonder if I can full combo this. If I just focus on using my gun, then maybe I can full combo it. Okay, so that's phase one. I've been... Oh, I lost my combo. Okay. Also, full comboing the boss means you can't get hit a single time. That's so hard, though. I'll still make an attempt after I beat this boss, but that'll be so hard. I'll have to make so many attempts to make it happen. Oh, wow. Okay. No point in saving that special gauge, just use it all. Half health. Oh my god, hearts. Oh, good, good, good. Yes. Okay, so it's gonna summon some dudes again. this was an anime, or if it was animated. This kind of fighting would look so cool, just dashing around everywhere. Alright, we did it! And we finished on an S rank too. Yeah, so that was pretty different from the first boss. Like, the, the model is similar. It, it's kind of like a palette swap, right? They've changed the attack patterns. Oh, I got an S rank. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, what's the next world called? Oh, yeah. Cool animation. <laughs> Next world's called West West Pine West. It looks kind of like the same building-y design as before. Okay, so tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep doing attempts until I beat this first boss with a perfect combo. And then I'm gonna cut out my failures, but I will count how many times that I've tried. So this is the first attempt. And you're not going to hear this unless it's the successful attempt. Is that spoilers? I don't know. Skip the cutscene. Let's go. So I think the gun's going to be really instrumental in the run being successful. Just keep using the gun to lengthen the combo. And just do your best to avoid the attacks whenever you can. And that's a that's a reset. Oh, there's a convenient reset button. Cool, 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 cool. This is attempt number two. This is attempt number five. Wow. 
This is attempt number six. Just gonna make sure your direction pad is tuned well. Okay, so this is the the gun stage. No. Can you dodge twice in midair? No, you can't. That's why I got hit. Okay. This is attempt number ten. We've learned a lot of mechanics in this game. You can't dodge twice while in midair. Sometimes the run that looks cleanest and coolest is the one that fails, and the one that looks the clumsiest is the one that succeeds, just to spite you. So I can see this happening with this fight. No! This is attempt number 25. You know, I never wanted to be one of those YouTubers that yells when they fail things. Like, I'm seeing a lot of people on Twitch and YouTube playing Jump King right now and just yelling when they fail. And I never wanted to be that guy, you know? That was never really my intention. This is attempt number 26. This is attempt number 33. Why do I do this to myself? Every day, we inch closer to enlightenment. This is attempt number 41. I actually haven't seen the last stages of this boss, so I don't know if I'm gonna beat it when I get to it. Like, I can try my best, right? But who knows what's gonna happen. Okay, so we did it. Now it's the minion stage. They kill two minions. Now we're back at it. Use the gun, make sure to keep the combo going, dash the bullets, keep the combo going, dash the bullets, keep the combo going, dash the bullets, keep the combo going. I'm always really scared to attack in this phase because I know that the safest time to attack is when it is just finished attacking. Okay, minion phase. A button combo. This is really close. Oh, we did it! Oh, we did it! Oh, that took so long. That was so many attempts and so much commentary that is now getting deleted. Oh, cool, cool, cool. You guys didn't hear me go crazy for like attempts 20 through 30 and all the weird singing I did, but wow, damn, I did it. Thank you for tuning in to Super Crush KO. This game is awesome. I enjoy it a lot. Even though it just caused me that much suffering, I did it because I enjoy it and I hope you guys enjoy it too. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys next week.